There was a Christmas show called Jingle All the Way. It stars Arnold Schwarzenegger. I don't know if any of you are familiar with it. It's uh, probably not a great movie. It, I think it had poor reviews and that type of thing, but it's one of my favorites. Uh, Arnold plays a father that continues to let down his son. He lets down his son. He lets down his wife. He continues to make promises that he does not keep. He doesn't, and it causes a lot of uh, anger among his wife and a lot of anger among his son. His work becomes his focus, takes up all his time, which causes him to miss several events that his son is involved in. Uh, after promising to be there, he misses them, forgetting to buy a popular toy that he promised uh, his wife that he would buy, and also missing a Christmas parade that he promised his son he would be there. He realizes after resorting to steal the toy that, that he had promised to buy and failed to do so, that he has lost all credibility with his wife and with his son. So he's drowning his sorrows and he comes to that realization that he's going to make every effort to correct what he's done and start keeping his promises. And so no matter how corny this movie was, we can learn a little bit from that, from that lesson of keeping your word, keeping your promises. In Deuteronomy 23, 21 through 23, if you make a vow to the Lord your God, you shall not delay fulfilling it. For the Lord your God will surely require it of you and you will be guilty of sin. But if you refrain from vowing, you will not be guilty of sin. You shall be careful to do what has passed your lips for you have voluntarily vowed to the Lord your God what you have promised with your mouth. James 5, 7 through 12 says, Be patient, therefore, brothers, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth being patient about it until it receives the early and the late rains. You also be patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not grumble against one another, brothers, so that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. As an example of suffering and patience, brothers, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Behold, we consider those blessed who remain steadfast. You have heard of the steadfastness of Job, and you have seen the purpose of the Lord, how the Lord is compassionate and merciful. But above all, my brothers, do not swear, either by heaven or by earth or by any other oath, but let your yes be yes and your no be no, so that you may not fall under condemnation. The scriptures I just read show the importance that God puts on keeping our word there's probably a lot of us that are interested in what our government is putting out there, our government leaders represent. We all see time and time again how the promises that they make are broken. And we're really quick to criticize them. But what about us? How are we doing at keeping our word how are we doing when keeping our word and we don't do what we say? Our heart truly reflects what we say and then putting what, that, that, what we say into action. We can say one thing, but if we don't represent what we say, then we are building a reputation without trust. Can't be trusted anymore. If our actions represent our words, then we build that trust that we need, that should be in all of us, should be important to each one of us to be trustful and be trustworthy. The reason this is so important as Christians is because we are representing our Father in heaven. Not only will we lose the trust with our brethren, it will build a wall with those that we are trying to bring to Christ. With those that are outside of Christ, it will build that wall. And when we think about keeping a promise, there is not a better example than our Father in heaven. In Joshua 21, 43 through 45, thus the Lord gave to Israel all the land that he swore to give to their fathers. And they took possession of it and they settled there. 
And the Lord gave them rest on every side, just as he had sworn to their fathers. Not one of all their enemies had withstood them, for the Lord had given all their enemies into their hands. Not one word of all the good promises that the Lord had made to the house of Israel had failed. All came to pass. And in Philippians 1.6, it says, And I'm sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. We see from these scriptures that our Father keeps his promises and his word. And we see how he handled the nation of Israel. And we see, see it in how he promised us his son that we can have a home in heaven. For his example is just as important that we also keep our word to each other. But to our Father in heaven also, we need to keep our promises and our word. We that are Christians have given our word that we will be obedient to our Father. But that way we have also promised to do the same to each other and represent God to those that we come in contact every day.